Okay, to find an inverse, remember input becomes output, output becomes input, so flip-flop your x and y. And then again, how do you solve a function? You isolate the chunk first, so get rid of the minus 9. Then you get rid of, you want just the function part, so divide by 3, okay? And remember, all this outside stuff is dealing with the ratio, all right? So I just kind of rewrote it here. Now, to get rid of the function, you do the inverse. So to get rid of sine, we do inverse sine, and those cancel. So I get that, and then inverse sine of that. And that should make sense, because inverse sine, the input is ratio stuff, right? Okay, now I want to isolate this chunk to get rid of pi over 2, you subtract it, and that's on the outside, okay? So I wrote it down here. Then to get rid of multiplying by 2 to isolate just this function, you do a half. Um, you could divide by 2, but since I have fractions, I'm doing a half. So there's a half here, half on the outside, half on the outside. So I get y equals half inverse sine of all that stuff. And notice all the ratio stuff, the adding 9, reverse minus 9, multiplying by 3, divide by 3. Okay, and then the angle stuff is here. Um, if you factor that, you could maybe see it a little better. Take the 2 out, what would that be, what, pi over 4, okay? Because remember, you can't really see much when it's not factored, but then you can kind of see where the minus pi over 4 comes, and then the reverse of 2 is a half, right? You can kind of see that, but all right, let's look at the graphing. Now, do the ratio normals negative 1 to 1, do the absolute value of the 6, so if it's negative, you wouldn't do it, but times 6 times 6, whether it's positive or negative, absolute value, negative 6 in that, Shift it up one, so negative five, seven. That's your ratios, okay? That's your uh, y-axis. Trap your angle between zero and two pi because that's the normal behavior. It, the normal period to get one iteration would be mid, high, mid, low, mid, and that happens between zero and two pi. If there's no shift, but see, there's a shift. Oh, shoot, Julie. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Uh, all right. I'm, all right, I accidentally had 2x. That's, you know, see, 2x, that doesn't help us, does it? All right, so shove it between there, subtract the pi from everything, and divide everything. Now, some of you are struggling with tick marks. Um, from a negative pi over 4, here's 0 pi over 4, that's not enough tick marks because you need, if you're going to go mid, high, mid, low, mid, you need four pieces, right? Because you need to have, you have four things you're going to do, right? So I only have two pieces. So what I need to do is cut these. And so what I'm going to do is get a common denominator here because I'm just basically cutting it more. So times two times two, negative two pi, what is that, over eight? and then um, 2 pi over 8. Now notice if I do that unit, so here's pi over 8, negative pi over 8. Now I have four pieces. So by just kind of, if your ends are too close together, they're not enough gaps, then you can do this. This gives me what I want. All right, now I already answered my other questions here. So amplitude, absolute value, still 6. Domain is all reals. Range is negative 5 to 7. Period is 2 pi divided by the coefficient of x, which is 4. Um, phase shift is what you get. Not that guy. Don't look at that. It's what you get after you do the shift here. So it's that, where am I at? It was that negative pi over 4 before I got a common denominator right there. So negative pi over 4, and then it goes up 1. Okay, so the units I have here are not good enough because that only gives me, what, the 2? So I'm going to cut all of these in half. And so my new unit, and they have to be consistent, is negative pi over 8. And then here's pi over 8, right? I'm not going to label everything, but it's pi over 8, 2 pi over 8, 3 pi over 8, 4 pi over 8, so forth. Okay, so what am I going to do? I'm not reflecting. I'm not doing anything. At negative 2 pi over 8, I have a mid. That would be right here. I have a mid. And remember, it looks like an S. Um, at the end, what do I have? At 2 pi over 8, let's see. So 2 pi over 8, here's pi over 8. This will be 2 pi over 8. I have a mid. In the middle of these two, I have another mid. 
then this guy halfway is going to be a high and this guy between there is going to be a low all right so every tick mark i have a change in behavior so my next one is here it's going to go high my next tick mark is going to be mid my next tick mark is going to be low then mid again then high again all right, and then I can keep going. All right, so if I go to Desmos, let me just check my answer here. Hopefully I didn't mess up. All right, so let's see. It looks like at we start at what? Negative pi over four. We had a mid at one, yep. And then we went going. Now, if I want to change my units, I don't know if I scroll out, maybe not. You could go to pi over eights here on the steps so you could go i just type in the word pi divided by eight and then you can see if that matches what we did and it does so i feel good about that all right let's go to the next one so let me get out of here and okay so the next graph is a tangent um our tangent what i do is just go around all the 45s because those are easy tangents um, zero divided by one is zero, so those are across. Square root of two over two divided by square root of two is one, those are across. The negatives are across. And then one divided by zero is undefined, so those are across. So normally it would go, you know, to one and negative one, but we have a, you know, stretch on there. So we're going to go six and six. So again, here I start at zero, then I go up to that. One times six is six. Then I get an asymptote. Then I come to a negative one. So it's going to be at negative six, zero, and six, and I keep going, okay? Your asymptotes on this are going to be, you can kind of see the pattern, all right? Now, uh, there are, is no amplitude because this goes off to infinity. Amplitude is a distance from the mid to the high. There is no, it's infinite, so we don't do that. Range are, yeah, range, infinite. So that's that, that's that. The period is normally pi right, for a tangent, and we have nothing on our x that's going to impact that. Phase shift, vertical, none. Excuse me, we didn't do anything. Now, look at your asymptotes. You have one at negative 2 pi over 4, that's a negative pi over half. You have one at 2 pi over 4, that's pi over 2. 6 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 2. So those are all the odd pi over 2s. So for your domain, you're going to have all reals, except every time you hit a odd pi over two. So you're going to say x equals k pi over two. If k is an odd integer, those are going to be your exceptions. Okay. All right. Next one. All right. So here I have a graph and you can see it goes mid, high, mid, low, mid in the distance of two pi. So that's its period. Okay. Amplitude is it's two and it is not reflected, right? It's the normal position. So I know that this is two sine. Now, this is the tricky part that you have to figure out. There's no phase shift, no vertical shift. So there's no trick on that. Remember, period is two pi divided by the coefficient of x. Some people call that b. Some people call it the Greek letter omega. So I have my period is six pi. Okay, I put a one under it equals two pi divided by b. I cross multiply. Okay, so I get two pi times one and I divide by the number by the b, which is that. And again, uh, pi's cancel and two goes into there, three, but there's still one, so I get one third. So I can kind of find the equation that goes with my um, problem, you know, if I want to. Something like this, if I put it on the test, would be extra credit. All right, do I have anything else, I guess? Oh, probably this last one and then I'll stop here for tonight, but, um, if you're going to graph cosecant or secant, even if you have a transformation on it, you just graph the function as sine or cosine, okay? So, you know, if it's sine, you do the S, right? If there's no transformation, right? If it's cosine, it looks like a cup, right? But again, assuming that there's no shifts or anything. All right, so you just graph your normal sine and cosine. And then cosecant or secant, whichever graph you're doing, is going to come off those humps. So it's going to come off the maxes or the mins, right? So you're gonna kinda come off there. Same thing over here, you come off the humps, come off the maxes or the mins, right? 
So all of those would be, and of course this would go to infinity. And then your asymptotes is everywhere there's a mid. So if your mid is at zero, then you're gonna have asymptotes are in the x-axis, okay? But if you have a shift, wherever your mid is, those are gonna be your asymptotes, okay? Okay, I wanted to show you the graph of tangent because I kind of skipped a few things I realized. So tangent is right here. So you can kind of see, you know, kind of how that looks. And it's just, you know, it's a normal tangent. It's just been stretched, right? The other thing I forgot to do is I forgot to do problem 18. So we are going to do that here um, at the end because, yeah, I just started with the next page. Um, so 18, uh, you have a parallelogram. The long sides are 12, 3. The acute angles are 30. So 180 degrees total here, 180 here, or 360 for the whole shape. But if these guys are 30, these have to both be 150 each. They have to add up to 300, so I get 360. Okay, I can use the half, the two, the trapped, because do you see how you have an angle trapped between two sides? So I'm going to do the half, the two sides, and then sine of 150. Type that in my calculator, I get nine. But notice that's the triangle that's just... That's the area of one triangle. Um, the parallelograms made up of two of them. So, but they're identical. So I don't have to do the math twice. So I just doubled that answer and got 18 square feet. If you wanted to, you could find the distance of the diagonal here. And you could do Heron's formula. Once you know that side length, you don't need any angles for Heron's, but you would need to use, you know, law signs or cosines or whichever one works um to get this guy okay um and then you could do herons now again herons might give you 17.99 or you know it might give you something like that it'll be it might be off a tad but because of rounding and stuff like that all right i'm gonna stop this video here and then um hopefully i can get the rest of the videos for this uh exam review done for you